So it's been over a year since the M1 MacBook Airs were released, and it's safe to say it is a great machine. You can do coding, 4K video editing, insane multitasking, and pretty much anything else. But being a year old at this point, is it still something you should buy? Are there more powerful options out there now, or is Apple releasing a redesigned MacBook Air in the near future? Well, let's just have a talk about it. So let's start with the price. So having been out for over 12 months already at this point, I've seen some pretty competitive pricing pop up on the market for the M1 MacBook Air specifically. Now I have seen comments from people, subscribers of this channel and just random people saying that recently they've been able to snag this bad boy for about 799 US dollars, which is a $200 savings from the $999 retail price tag. Now, the second-hand market is also starting to really pick up now, as is the refurbished store on the Apple website. I've made videos on this previously as well, guys. There's nothing wrong with getting a refurb unit. Works perfectly fine, you get the same warranty. Definitely try and pick one up if you can. But for the price of this machine, you get a really extraordinary price to performance ratio. Name me another laptop out there that can edit 4K video, has an insane 16 hour battery life, makes zero fan noise, and has a retina screen for about 800 bucks. And this leads me to my next point, which is performance. Now, just quickly before we go any further, a big thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. Protect your Mac from viruses, malware, and adware with Trend Micro Antivirus 1 for Mac. Antivirus 1 allows you to scan your Mac for hidden threats in less than a minute, meaning that you can instantly find and eliminate viruses, ransomware, and other malicious software before they can get to your data. You'll be able to block web threats such as risky websites, phishing scams, pop-up scams, aggressive ads and more with just one click. And another useful feature in Antivirus 1 is the data privacy sweep, which clears personal information from web browsers before anything is leaked online. Download Trend Micro Antivirus 1 for Mac and get the best antivirus security without slowing down your device by checking the link down below. Now, I'm just gonna be frank with you, there's a 95% chance you're never going to need more power or performance than what the base model M1 MacBook Air can provide. You see all of these editing CPU, GPU, or coding benchmarks out there from YouTubers, including myself, I am guilty of this as well. But the target market of this device is for casual users and students, not editors or 3D designers using Blender, for example. Now, speaking of benchmarks, there's no doubt about it that the new 14-inch MacBook Pro, for example, destroys the air, obviously, and also has a lot of other cool features, including that screen. Damn, it's nice. But at double the price tag, is that really worth it? Not to mention the M1 MacBook Pro barely beating the air in most benchmarks. Now, if you're going to be spending most of your day web browsing, watching YouTube videos, or even doing extreme multitasking with office apps and maybe 15 to 20 browser tabs open, the M1 MacBook Air will handle it with ease. So why bother spending more money on performance you'll never even need anyway? And like I've shown many times on this channel, if you need to do some 4K editing, Blender rendering, or Xcode compiling, you still definitely can. And while we're on the topic of the M1 MacBook Pro versus the Air, most of you that purchased the Air last year are now outside your one year warranty. So if you're feeling brave enough, you can try the Thermal Mod, which will actually give you about a 15% performance boost on your Air, bringing its total performance to very closely match the more expensive M1 MacBook Pro. I will link this video in the top right corner if you're interested. I have been using this modded M1 MacBook Air daily for almost a year and have had zero issues at all. One other thing to mention is that even a whole year into the era of Apple Silicon MacBook Airs, other competitors are still struggling to match it. Now, typically I've found that most other laptops 
at this price range, so about 800 to 1000 US dollars, even from companies like Dell and Microsoft have big compromises in certain areas that the M1 MacBook Air simply does not have. For example, poor GPU performance, 1080p screens that don't get quite bright enough, or simply battery life being five or six hours worse than what the M1 MacBook Air can achieve. Now, the M1 MacBook Air is just such a good all-rounder, and the main thing you have to compromise on is it's a Mac and it runs Mac OS. And some people aren't a big fan of Apple or Mac OS. This can kind of be a bit of a large pill to swallow. Okay, so moving on to the next point I want to talk about, and this is probably the most obvious, but also the most controversial. So as you might have noticed, Apple is currently in the middle of a massive upgrade cycle for almost all of their products, specifically the Mac lineup. Just this year, we've had the iPad Pro refresh, we've had new iMacs, and also most recently redesigned 14 and also 16 inch MacBook Pros. And the rumor mill has been churning ever since with regards to the other Mac products. Now, I'm not gonna go into any of the specific rumors floating around out there regarding the M1 MacBook Air redesign, because guys, no one knows what's going to happen uh, until these rumors actually are announced by Apple as a product launch in November or whatever next year. We have no idea, so there's no point talking about it. But in my opinion, I think we're definitely going to see a refreshed version of the MacBook Air coming out at the end of 2022. That being said, even if it gets a new, more powerful Apple Silicon processor or a couple of extra ports or even a mini LED screen, for example, it's still not gonna be a massive jump from the current version in my opinion. Again, most people are just web browsing or using it to study for school or university. And don't forget that Apple simply can't increase the price point from $999, or it's gonna be too expensive for many people, and a lot of people just won't be able to purchase or afford this machine. And there's only so much performance and features Apple can cram into an entry-level $999 MacBook anyway. So guys, my opinion is if you need one of these machines, just grab it now, there's no need to wait. Yes, we might see a redesign at the end of 2022. At the point of this video, that's still over a year away. And I never ever recommend waiting for a better version to come out in the future because most of the time you'll sit around waiting for a year or two. It may not even launch next year. And at that point, you've just wasted a year waiting to pick up one of these machines. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, you know what to do. But apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.